Hey guys, today we are making steak on our Ninja Foodie Grill. Oh, I'm having a whole lot of fun. Oh, look at those grill marks. Oh my goodness. Hey guys, welcome back to my kitchen. I am Chris from RecipesThatCrock.com. I am Mikey from RecipesThatCrock.com and I am hungry. And today, we are cooking with the Ninja Foodie Grill for Yay. Foodie Friday. And so we're kind of going through some of the basic things that we are finding that we really enjoy with the Foodie Grill. So if those of you who are catching up, we have for a long, long time cooked in this kitchen and on the road with our Ninja Foodie, which is the pressure cooker. Which we love. And it has the air fryer built in. This is a grill with an air fryer built in. And so it's an indoor grill. And we are finding that there are some things that we are very much enjoying. Um, and so a few weeks ago we showed you how to make grilled chicken on it and so today we're going to show you how to make incredible steaks on it and to your liking. So what we're starting with... Two huge honking ribeyes. These ribeyes are an inch thick. I know because I actually took a measuring tape and measured them. And also if you look they are very well marbled. You can see the fat that's been marbled through there and that's one thing that we really really enjoy and especially being on low carb or even the keto and paleo diets. You want high protein and definitely high fat to keep you full. And these steaks have all of that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna sprinkle them with meat tenderizer, or you could use steak seasoning on the side that's gonna go down on our preheated foodie grill. We've preheated the foodie grill to a medium heat. And so it is now giving us the indicator to add the food. And so that's the step we're on. So we're gonna open this up. And it is hot, hot, hot. There's some yes. heat coming out of there. Yep. And so now we're just going to put the steaks down, seasoned side down. Mm -mm. Hear that sizzle? And then you want to go ahead and season the top of your steaks too. Yep. Now I know there's some people who are going to be commenting down below, oh my gosh, you don't want to use steak tenderizer on your steaks. Well, yeah, we do. And it's not really because it's going to tenderize the meat because it doesn't, but it's just the flavors that are in the meat tenderizer we use are really good. There's some purists out there that are like, you don't want to use anything else except for salt and pepper. Then that's the way you make your steak. I like mine with meat tenderizer. So we have put this on the medium heat for five minutes. No matter how you want your steak, unless you want it like absolutely rare, that's what I would recommend to do. You want your medium rare. I like it where mine moves. And so what we, what I normally do is I do five minutes on the first side and then depending on what each person wants their steak cooked to and how thick the steak is, I then add minutes. Yeah, so. like if you've got like something that's like Super really thin. thin, like sandwich ribeyes, not gonna work. A no. thin piece of meat, you're gonna definitely reduce your cooking time. Mm -hmm. And then of course, there's some people that give those like two inch thick steaks. You're part of my family, I'm sure. <laughs> then you're gonna give it a little more time in the grill too, because yeah. what you're, if you don't want it raw in the middle, I'm sorry, we call that rare back home. If you don't want it rare in the middle, you wanna give it some good cooking time to where that pink goes away. Me, honestly, as long as it's got a sear on the outside, I really don't care about the inside. So ultimately, what I enjoy about the Foodie Grill, even over my outdoor grill, is it allows me to get a really nice char on the outside of the steak while not overcooking the inside of the steak. However, if you really enjoy a well done steak, you can still get that awesome char and you just cook it just a little bit longer. So the basic rule of thumb that I'm gonna give you, if your steaks are about one inch, is cook it for five minutes on the first side, and then depending on how well done you like your steak, you continue cooking it a few minutes on, on the other side. So for Mikey, I usually only cook it one to two minutes on the second side. For me, I usually cook it three to four minutes because I prefer more of a medium kind of steak. If the steak is thinner, then you probably want to reduce that five minutes down to two or three minutes and then flip and add one to two minutes until you get it to where you want. The really cool thing about the Foodie Grill is that it has the liftable lid, so when you're figuring out how you like it best, 
you can really easily lift the lid without disturbing the food, which is unlike a lot of air fryers. We are on the grill setting, not the air fryer setting, but I will say it still has a lot of that air fryer quality to it for me. Well, it gives it's, a crisp. it's circulating the heat kind of like a convection oven would, so you're getting your heat off the grill grate for sure, but then you're also getting it cooked on the top. So it's a lot different than uh, your conventional grill where all your heat's coming from down below with a, just a little bit of residual heat coming from the, usually a tall dome style lid. The heat is all right there. So you're cooking it on one side, you're searing it on the other. So we'll be back here in about two minutes to show you how we're gonna flip things in three, two, one. Come see. See how that is really cooked on that side? And it's already starting to yeah, render look the how fat. The, look how that fat's browning up. Mm -hmm. It's only gonna get better once we turn that over. Oh, look at those grill marks. Oh my goodness. Okay, so now I'm gonna put it on for probably one to two minutes. Make it one for me. One for you. Again, I like my food to move. <laughs> so we're gonna cook it for one minute for Mikey and then we're gonna take his off and let mine cook for a couple more minutes. So we'll see you back in three, two, one. Alrighty, it's a minute. So which one do you want? We call that a hot minute. Mm, mm, mm. You want this one? I do because that's the one you want me to have because you want all that crisp up fat, which is fine. I'm going to put yours on a plate. Hang on a second because I want a picture. Ow. Oh, work it, girl. Work it. Okay, so we are going to take Mikey's out and put mine in for a few more minutes. Do you want to cut into that and show them what yours looks like? No because I also want to let it rest for a couple minutes. You let the meat calm down and then the juices won't run out and get all over your plate. They'll stay within the meat. They'll stay within the meat itself. It's almost time. All right, so we got mine. It's done. I'm getting ready to cut into it, but let's look at Chris's. See that. Look, look at how that's that. bubbled up. Look at that crispy fat right yummy, there. Yummy, yummy, yummy. Look at that. Ooh, that ooh, is ooh. the perfect steak. I can't get a steak like this in a steakhouse, y'all. And I gotta let mine rest while you cut into yours. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut into mine here. Look at that, I got crispy fat right there. And this is rested for, what, about three minutes, which I'm fine with that. I'm gonna cut deep into there. And that, to me, is the perfect rare, medium rare right there. That's what I like. It's not, it's not like super raw, but medium rare should be a warm pink center. And that is, okay? Now the best thing, is tasting this wonderful creation. There was no mistake here. Uh-huh, and it isn't leaking out all over the plate nope. because you let it rest. I let the meat rest, and it's, it's perfect. So yeah, I let my meat rest for just a little bit after it came out of the grill, and that'll let the juices kind of set back up, let the fat set back up in the meat. It's tender, which ribeyes to me, I think it depends on the cut of meat you get, the cow it comes from, all kinds of factors. But the ribeyes that you've been making in here lately have been really, really good. Well, I think it's a couple things. With a ribeye, you run the risk. If you don't cook it long enough, the fat doesn't render enough and then it becomes chewy. But if you cook it too long, then you can make the meat tough because you've overcooked the meat. So, and I know a lot of you are going to ask me, well, what if we don't enjoy ribeyes? What if we like sirloin? It's always going to have three factors involved. The amount of fat that is in your steak is going to determine how long you cook it, the thickness of your steak, and then your preference of how well done you enjoy it. So if it doesn't have a lot of fat in it, it's going to cook faster than those that do have fat in it. It's also going to be a lot drier. Yeah. And so you're going to have to watch it closely to uh, make sure, you, so you always kind of want to err on the side of not cooking as fast and also do what Mikey did, which is wait the three minutes for it to set when you think you have it right so that it doesn't lose all of its juices when you cut into it. 
um, thickness. If you're less than an inch, you really are going to have to watch that time because the thinner the steak, the quicker it's going to get done and the quicker it's going to toughen up if you cook it. It's kind of like the opposite of whenever you use a crock pot. When you're using a grill or um, an oven or a broiler or something like this, you're using dry heat versus moist heat. In the crock pot, you cook it longer the meat falls apart uh, for beef. But on, in um, dry heat, the longer you cook it, the more you're kind of sucking the moisture out of it. So you want to be careful about that. But now it's time for me to cut into mine. And I'm hopefully, ideally, going to have uh, a medium steak here, which would be a slight pink center. So let's hope I did a good job. There we go. My slight pink. You got are you watching me butcher my steak? Sorry, guys. There you go. That's how that I like good. my steak. Mm -hmm. So I like that my fat is crispy on the edge. That's my very favorite part, and most steak houses do not do that with a medium steak. And then I like it slightly pink in the middle so that it'll be nice and tender. How do you like your steak? In the comments down below, let me know. Well, if you like this video, we'd love for you to give us a thumbs up. If you're not already a member of the Crock Posse, click subscribe down below and become a member of our slow cooking, foodie loving family around here. Um, if you would like notified every time we upload a video, click the ding link. And that's the notification bell down below that tells YouTube you want to know every time we upload a video. But whatever you do, laugh softly, eat good food, and speak life. Bye, guys. I'm gonna go take pictures of this so I can eat it. I'm just gonna eat it. <laughs> if you wanna see the latest, click on the left right here. If you feel like subscribing, click on the right, my dear. And if you think we're funny, enough to send us money, click the Patreon link below.